So that's an analysis of his shooting stats. Let's move on and now take a look at the next component, which is drawing fouls. So as we saw, when we're trying to boil everything into points per shot attempt, it starts with shooting, so points from field goal attempts. And that's what we just dove into with the shooting location information. And now the next layer is foul drawing. We got a hint as to what we would learn in this section when we saw that when we compared points per shot attempt to effective field goal percentage, we saw BAM tended to rank higher in points per shot attempt in every single one of his seasons than he did in effective field goal percentage, meaning he was getting a significant boost to his efficiency through drawing fouls, and that's exactly what we see in this table. So first, I'll look at his shooting foul percentage. What percentage of his shot attempts did he draw a shooting foul? That clearly has been high through his entire career. His rookie year, 94th percentile, and then as he's slowly scaled up his shots away from the rim, and then this year obviously a little more, those numbers have dropped. It is impressive this year his shooting foul rate has gone up despite, as we just saw, taking a lower percentage of, shot, of his shots at the rim. Not only has he been great at drawing contact when shooting, but we can also see he's done it on non-shooting fouls as well. His uh, floor fouled percentage, his rate of drawing fouls that are non-shooting fouls, has also been high for a big man throughout his career. This, as you might imagine, can track with usage because the more you have the ball, the higher chance there is to draw a non-shooting foul. In Bam's case, it hasn't really, which suggests that a lot of it might have to do with physicality, his physicality rebounding, uh, or in other situations, drawing fouls rather than simply you know drawing fouls when attacking or, or trying to make a play. We also have his and one percentage. So how, what percentage of his shot attempts where he is fouled, does he also convert the basket? And this doesn't really tell that consistent of a story. It can also be subject to small sample sizes. What we see here is nothing particularly consistent or that really jumps out at you. And so that's something that I kind of would just skip over in this situation. It's not really adding anything to the story. Okay, so let's flip over to the last tab here, defense and rebounding. It tells you something right off the bat that defense and rebounding only has one tab, and that is just a factor of the fact that cleaning the glass pulls from play-by-play -play data, and play-by-play -play data, just the historic data that we have, play-by-play -play box score data, just tells you a lot less about defense than it does about offense. This is just an example of that. This is not, I mean, as we saw with the whole analysis, this is not a be-all and end-all. It's particularly the case with defense. I do not put a ton of stock in this table simply because it's only telling you a small portion of what's actually happening defensively that this player is causing. That said, at first glance, we can get one piece of information, which is that there is no blue in this table, basically. There, in other words, there's nothing that BAM does defense and rebounding that has been particularly below average. Um, that's true throughout his career. If we start with the block column, you can see about a middle of the pack shot blocker has increased slightly over his career. The biggest thing that jumps out is his steal rate had a huge increase between year one and year two. It's interesting to understand why that is, but it's mostly stayed high even despite that increase in usage, suggesting that you know as a big man he can really cause turnovers. So this steal rate, this high steal rate for BAM is a really positive indicator. We can stick this on our list as we're taking notes. Average shot blocker, high steals. And as you go one 
column over, you see his foul rate has actually changed pretty drastically, particularly this last year. About middle of the pack for a big man. His first two seasons this year, one of the lowest foul rates in the league as he's entered the starting lineup. It's an interesting question that we can look at and put on our list. Very low foul rate this year. What changed? But it's really important to see his low foul rate is not a product, or does at least from this table, does not seem to be a product of not being involved defensively. There are some players who have very low foul rates just because they're not doing much on the defensive end. But Bam has decent block rate, high steal rate. If he's not disengaged, so he's this is a very positive sign he's able to be productive defensively without fouling. Then as we get over to the rebounding section, we can see his offensive rebounding rate off of field goals. It's important in my mind to separate between free throws and field goals because of, they're two very different rebounding situations. Obviously, a free, off a of free throw, big men are lined up on the lane line, and it's not quite as uh, contested of a rebound sometimes, and so the rates can be very different. So in this case, we segment out the free throw op opportunities, and we look just at offensive rebounds off of missed field goals, you can see pretty consistent through his career has gone down a little bit as his usage has increased and as he's taken more shots away from the rim, which is exactly what you would expect since rebounding your own misses, particularly those further away from the rim, is harder. On the defensive side of the ball, he had a jump between his rookie and second year and otherwise has stayed similar with a solidly above average defensive rebounding rate. So we can put that on our list as well. Average offensive rebounder above average on defensive glass. So let's put it all together now. Here are the things we know that we've talked about. High usage rate starting this season above average efficiency great passer for a big man turnover prone we know that with the increase in efficiency has increased short mid-range shots finishes well at the rim draws a ton of fouls which really boosts his scoring efficiency solid shot blocker high steals for a big man really reduced foul rate this year despite maintaining high block and steal rate solid rebounder on both ends and there you have it this would be our quick summary based on those stats of bam as a player let me know what questions you have thoughts whether this was helpful i hope it was obviously as you get used to the site as you get used to these stats, it takes you a lot less time to interpret and put all that together. But hopefully this was a informative walkthrough to see how I would go through these stats and just get that kind of quick overview of a player based on his profile stats.